Hey guys, it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you've been doing okay over the past few weeks. It's been a rough time in the market for all of us. We've had a big downturn and uh, definitely a lot of pain going on out there. Today I'm doing another episode of Space Stocks News where we cover the big headlines around all the space companies. Uh, there's been a lot going on lately, so let's dive right into it. Starting off with Rocket Lab, on October 7th, 2022, Rocket Lab successfully launched its eighth mission of the year and 31st overall. The mission was called It Argos Up From Here. This represents a new record for Rocket Lab, besting their previous record of seven launches in 2022. So congratulations to Rocket Lab on the new record. Rocket Lab remains on track to continue its monthly launch cadence for the rest of the year with missions from New Zealand as well as its first ever launch from the United States. So we're probably looking at 12 or 13 launches for the year, probably 12, which would represent a significant increase from its previous record of seven. Continuing on with Rocket Lab, ARC has been continuing to add shares in Rocket Lab in its ARC X and ARC Q funds pretty consistently. As you can see from the list to the right, we've been having regular buys happening on October 10th, 7th, 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, and September 29th. So it looks like this buying could well continue for a while into the future as we see ARC supporting Rocket Lab stock. Uh, checking out their holding, it does seem like there's plenty of room for ARC to continue adding Rocket Lab shares to their funds. In their ARC X fund, we see that Rocket Lab's sitting at a 0.79% weighting, only 34th highest held company. And in ARC Q, it is their 36th highest held company with a 0.47% rating. Especially in that ARC Q fund, which is their space fund, I feel like ARC should really be a top 10 holding. So we'll see if it gets there or not, but either way, definitely a lot of room for ARC to continue adding if they so desire. Now for Firefly Aerospace, they appeared to have their first successful launch on October 1st. Everything looked good on launch day. The rocket made it to orbit and deployed the payload successfully. We all considered it a success, and Firefly called the mission a success. However, independent observations actually placed the satellites in much lower orbits than was initially planned. So we're looking at 200 kilometers instead of 300 kilometers, so quite a significant underperformance. Three of the satellites actually re-entered Earth's atmosphere on October 5th, and the fourth remaining satellite re-entered on October 7th. So all those satellites re-entering much earlier than originally planned, ending up in lower orbits than planned. Seems like there was some sort of issue with the second stage of the rocket. Now, if we, we take a look at data from CIRA data, uh, they have said there's some evidence of underperformance on the Firefly Alpha flight, probably the second stage, meaning the satellites re-enter much earlier than expected. According to CIRA data, they now consider this mission a failure as the satellites did not reach their intended orbit. However, Firefly reiterated that the launch was a success, saying the first stage and second stage performance was in line with our Flight 2 requirements and therefore successful. NASA spokesperson Rachel Hoover confirmed on October 7th that the TechEd Sat-15 had deorbited. She added, though, that the spacecraft's mission had been expected to last less than 10 days. TechEd Sat-15 was delivered to an orbit that allowed the project to achieve its objectives, Hoover said. The team is now analyzing the flight data to study performance of the latest iteration of its exo-brake technology. So at least one of the customers of Firefly was satisfied with the performance of its satellites and got the required data they needed, even though it did not end up at the right orbit. So uh, was it a success? Was it a failure? Do you agree with Firefly? Do you agree with these other independent observers that say since they didn't end up in the correct orbit, it's technically a failure? Let me know down in the comments below which side you fall on. Now for Virgin Orbit, they are readying their Start Me Up, the newly titled forthcoming launch from the United Kingdom. The launch provider's carrier aircraft, ground support equipment, and rocket will depart this week from California following the first round of now-complete wet dress rehearsals. On track for a November launch, Start Me Up is led by a joint mission between the United States and United Kingdom governments launched by Virgin Orbit, the United Kingdom Spaceball, the United Kingdom Space Agency, UK Space Command, and Spaceport Cornwall. 
Start Me Up will be a launch of many firsts, the first orbital launch ever from the United Kingdom, the first international launch from Virgin Orbit, and the first commercial launch from Western Europe. Now on to Redwire, a small bit of news for the space infrastructure company. They did acquire a space company called Kinetic Space NV, or just Space NV for short, a Belgium-based commercial space business provider designing and integrating critical space infrastructure and other instruments for end-to-end space missions. Under the terms of the agreement, Redwire will acquire Space NV for 32 million euros, subject to customary working capital adjustments. Upon closing, the transaction is expected to be accretive to Redwire's adjusted EBITDA and cash flow, meaning this company should already be cash flow positive and actually help Redwire hit profitability sooner as opposed to being a step back on the road to profitability. Small note from Astra, they advised that they have received a delisting warning from the NASDAQ after their stock spent 30 straight days below the $1 per share level. Not unexpected for investors of the company, but they now have 180 days to lift their share price or face delisting according to a regulatory filing. They will need to maintain a share price of above a dollar per share for at least 10 days straight in order to avoid this delisting, meaning we're most likely looking at some sort of a reverse split unless the stock has a very strong performance in the next 180 days. Astra also announced recently that it reached an agreement with Maxar Technologies to supply their spacecraft engines. The propulsion systems will be used in Maxar's proliferated low earth orbit spacecrafts which support a wide variety of global coverage missions including earth observation communications and national security astra expects to begin delivery of its spacecraft engines in 2023 so unfortunately for astra fans this is not going to immediately add revenue to the books and they still need to bridge to 2023 and try and stay afloat until their next spacecraft begins flying That's it for today with Space Talk News. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys are doing all okay in this rough market period, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.